Oh, that's just right. Riding around, two, 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 all the stuff. That's where we're gonna be. Yeah, I want you to be able to see the motorcycle. Why, John, what's going on? Today is the day. Today, we're gonna go over to uh, Adventure Center. Oh yes. I think it'll be fine. Today we're gonna go over to Adventure Center <coughs> and uh, ride a Bullet 500. Talk about it a little bit. So stay tuned for that because that's why we're here. As if you couldn't tell by the video title. <laughs> Anyway, that's the day today. Planning on rolling over a, uh, a tick on the odometer here. And uh, more importantly, this is the Royal Enfield video. We're going to ride the Royal Enfield and talk about it. And uh, I'm so stoked. This is going to be awesome. So I'm going to eat up a minute or two here talking about uh, philosophy of use. And. Uh, kind of foreshadow the infield with uh, this bike. The philosophy of use on this bike, the reason I have it uh, is for long distance rides, uh, a little bit of adventure. I want to When I got this, I wanted to do a lot more camping. Uh, and I've done a couple of camping trips on it. It's, it's fun for that. Uh, this is good for riding up in the hills and stuff. <coughs> uh, the guys that I ride with are so far above my ability that uh, I can't keep up. And usually whenever I'm riding with them, somebody's gotta hang back and roll with me, which kind of kills their ride, I think. I've been doing a little bit uh, more, and then this last year I didn't really ride much at all on account of the clutch. And uh, I got close to my financial goal of getting this fixed in the shop, and uh, had something come up. Had to take care of that, so we're back, not all the way back to square one, but more than halfway. Anyway, uh, we're going to get this taken care of. we got to get this squared. I just I love this bike so much. Uh, but this bike is as uh, street glide. Uh, this bike is as gold wing as I get. This is as dad jeans as I can do, man. I like this bike. I love the way it handles. The single pull a wheelie, a gold wing won't do that. The single go off road, a gold wing won't do that. A bagger, a uh, Harley bagger won't do that. Um, so, yeah, this is my big touring bike. And it's not that big of a touring bike, but it does the job, it does it really well. So from long trips and stuff, we get to the uh, infield, talk a little bit about purpose of use for that bike.
All right, guys. Today is the day we do the video on the Royal Enfield. I'm so stoked about this. I've wanted to get one of these bikes since I first saw them. And I uh, really just don't have the room in the garage right now, but we're going to fix that. And uh, this job change thing, once finances get a little more squared, uh, once I get that bike squared, I'm probably going to pull a trigger on one of these. I want one. So these are the 2017. They have the unit construction engine, 499 cc engine, bullet 500, right? Uh, they're doing about 27 horsepower and about 40, I think 42 or 43, something like that. I'll put the thing down in a doobly do there, uh, down in the description. They're doing 40 some odd foot pounds of torque, so they got a lot more torque than horsepower. They're really low geared, and uh, this one's in blue. I kind of like the blue. I really like the tan with the red accents. Uh, and then, of course, I like the, the military-looking ones. But anyway, uh, let's go for a ride. Take it down off the center stand. Now, I'm standing here uh, flat-footed, and it's just barely touching my backside. I can sit down and bring my feet up. It's a really low revving bike. Really low revving bike. Oh, here we go. Uh-oh. That mirror's out of adjustment for me, but that's okay. I gotta be honest. Uh, it looks a little small on me, but it's not bad. Let's do this. They've got signage and stuff, but that's not bad. It's it's a comfortable size. It could be a little bigger. Or I could be a little smaller too. Uh, just as a point of reference, I'm six foot four and I weigh about 270 pounds right now. And I really need to get that down because I'll be honest. Uh, uh, I was at a customer shop yesterday and uh, I stepped on the shipping scale and it said 270 and that's the most I've ever weighed. <laughs> that's terrible. Anyway, uh, I don't know if you can tell but that got up to 40 like right now. These things aren't massive. Uh, these things aren't massively powerful, and they're not meant to be revved high. This is downright comfortable. I rode it the other day for a few minutes. I'm gonna ride it for a little bit more today. But you keep the revs down like this, and uh, we're doing 30 right here. This is a bumpy road, and believe me, I'm feeling it. Uh, the vibrations are, are pretty low. They're bearable the bounciness of the road you can definitely feel that spring in that seat working <laughs> talking kind of uh, my purpose for my BMW and uh, the purpose of this would be totally different what are you doing dude whatever it is let's do it there you go I don't know where the turn signal Oh, I see them. I can use turn signals from now on. 
So the purpose of the bike like this would be a little bit different. Uh, this is not going to take you across the country. It could. You could do it, but uh, you'd have to be a lot younger and tougher than I am. How cool is that? You'd have to be a lot younger and tougher than me uh, to do something like that, I think. You can definitely feel the vibrations in this, but it's not its not obnoxious. But I think over a long period of time, if you were riding it all day or something, I think it'd probably start getting to you. A lot of guys doing reviews on these have mentioned that. But it's worth mentioning because there is a lot of vibration. If you can see how that mirror is behaving right now, this one. But man, this thing pulls. Uh, what it lacks in horsepower, it's making up for in torque, big time. I really want to get it up on the freeway. I just, I'm, I'm enjoying the hell out of this. So, uh, yeah, the purpose of a bike like this would be a commuter. Uh, something for around town. I don't think I would go nuts trying to go anywhere on it. But then, I've got a bike for that. So, that would be part of my decision making process. But something like this would be great to get you to work every day. If you had a pair of saddlebags, you could run to the shops, get stuff you needed, uh, grocery store and all that stuff. Uh, you know, I did not start riding motorcycles on purpose. Uh, if you look at my good starter bike video, I kind of tell the story about that. I did it out of poverty and I got what I got because it's what I could afford. And uh, the thing is, is if I had planned things a little bit better, God, this thing pulls. This thing pulls. This is a key thing right here, this filtering. It just, it's so controllable. It is so controllable. At your neutral light. I don't know if you can see that. But the purpose of a bike like this to me would be an around town commuter. It'd be something just to get me to uh, get me to work. It'd be something to get me to uh, the grocery store. I'd put saddlebags on it. Uh, courier looking bags or something. Something that looked period correct. The cool thing about these is the look on them. And you can get uh, as a competitive option, you can get things like the little Ninja 300s, and uh, the price point's going to be about the same, but uh, I don't think this is that much more than a Honda Grum, and honestly, I'd rather have this than a Grum. It looks cool. It, it feels good driving it. I see the guys driving the Grums. I got to get that shield off of me there. Sometime today, dude. Anytime today, geez. I'm not ready to go anyway. I'll tell you, you let the clutch out and it feels like you're gonna stall it, but you don't. It's just got so much low end grunt. Here we go. I think I'm in fourth now. That's not bad. I'm doing 60 miles an hour. Uh, that's 100 kilometers per hour. And let's get it up to 65. There you go. But you've got no wind protection, so, you know, 65, 60, 65 is about all I'd really want to do anyways. Uh, when I did the Mulholland ride on the Harley, I did that whole thing at 65 or less, I think. I don't think I ever got up to 70 at all. I don't think I 
got up to 70 at all. It was just comfortable to sit back and cruise and uh, take it easy the whole time. And it took all day to get... It took me all day to get down Mulholland and over to Ventura. And that was fine. That's exactly what I wanted to do was spend the day riding. You are not going to get on this bike and do 80 miles an hour to wherever it is you want to go on the highway. So, kind of like a Ural. This is not a slap bike. But it's not bad. The, the revs... Uh, the vibrations in the handles, they're not it's not that bad. I mean if you're looking at it. Yeah, you can feel that. I can feel it on my backside, I can feel it on my feet. But uh, I got the balls of my feet on the the pegs. And it's just getting it. And in the top end it doesn't feel like it's got a lot more to go, but uh, it slowly climbs. That's pretty good. So yeah, slow lane travel on the freeway, not bad. Again, around town, uh, this thing's great. I'm gonna go up here and take a couple of pictures of it on the bluff. Oh man, let's look at this. That's me in a reflection of that truck there. <laughs> It's just, that's a cool looking bike. It looks so neat. And, uh, I talked about, uh, in the video with the Himalayan on the front picture, I talked about, uh, the simplicity of these machines. Some of the mechanics on it are a little bit difficult. Some of the mechanics on it are a little bit difficult, but most of it's fairly simple. And uh, I think once you got to know your machine, I think you'd be able to work on it yourself. That's another reason I say that this would be a great bike for a beginner uh, that wants to ride motorcycles and a great daily commuter for a guy that wants to um, just have this as his vehicle. 110 miles on the clock here. That's how many people have test rode it, 110 miles worth. I'm putting a few on it now. Look at that. It's just still just fine. Riding around in traffic. I'm not going to take the freeway back down because uh, I know it'll do better going downhill. But I want to ride it around in traffic a little bit. I don't know how much of that you can see in that image. Mm. Ah, this is fun. So right up here, right up here is where I bought my first motorcycle. I think uh, four or five houses down there, it was her grandpa's and he'd passed away and she was selling it just to get some cash and uh, get it out of the garage. What a cool little bike. It's it. Uh, Oh man, this doesn't feel bad at all. And for an around town, yeah, if I had taken up riding on purpose in my 20s, this would have been, this would have been awesome. I don't know if you can hear that exhaust. We'll find out in the playback. So the feeling of it, the suspension, you can see there's a little bit of dip there. Uh, the back brake is a drum. This is, like I said, this is the 2017 model. The 2018 models uh, make the Euro 4 spec, so they have ABS, disc brakes all around. I think two discs in the front, one disc in the back, ABS. They're not linked, but I know of. They're not linked that I know of, but uh, the fuel ejection is a little different. I think that noise is going to be a little different on the new bikes. Um, oh boy, corner's good. Big corner's great. 
the center of gravity on this thing is low it's way low because you saw how I was sitting on it uh, because the way it sets down and it's small it's so small that uh, it's really easy to, to pop around on it it's very controllable it's a heavy bike for its size but uh, it's a heavy bike for its size but it's controllable the discs on this uh, the disc in the front has good stopping power the drum in the back eh, it's okay I just used it uh, about two lights ago I used it about two lights ago just just the back brake it's it's eh, you know it's there <laughs> the the front brake does better we're doing 40 So however long that took. Ooh, found a neutral in the middle. But man, yeah, for an around town commuter, how awesome is this? I tell you what I really like is the uh, the clutch in the gearbox are easy to operate it is so easy to actuate the uh, the clutch on this or yeah I mean it's easy to actuate the clutch of course but it's it's not like pulling your hand away from it it's it's doing really well and uh, it's doing really well it's super easy So another trick here is uh, you cannot put the side stand down without killing the bike. So we're going to put the center stand down. There you go. How cool is that? Oop. I've probably been riding like that for a while. No, because I just turned. How cool is that? comes pre-fitted with a uh, charging port so you can put the trickle charger on it uh, these boxes are not for storage they are for um, let's look go ahead and turn that off there's electronics in there your toolkit obviously uh, not watertight obviously this one I think is some electronics of some sort let's see uh, the air filter that's right I knew that dummy anyway let's uh, rock this forward a bit I want to put it on that stand because it'll look cool anyway there you go just too much fun I wish how's it going It's low slung, so it's really easy to, to ride. Cool bike. My name's Robert. John. Hi, John. Glad to meet you. Down there on uh, Chester, just north of the circle, uh, between the Supply Sergeant and Floyd's, Adventure Power Center. Uh, Adventure Power Sports. Adventure Center Power Sports. I'll say it right eventually. <laughs> uh, go in there and talk to Brento. They've got... They got the, the new Continental GTs, got the little bit bigger engine, and it's a sit forward like a cafe racer. And they've got these, and uh, they're just too cool, man. That's nice. I like that. He said financing on these, he can do about 100 bucks a month. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> that's not bad at all. Okay, thanks. Take care, man. There you go. So, anyway, uh, yeah, coming in, drum brake on the back disc on the front I forgot where I was guys uh, the shifting is really the shifting is really easy to do uh,
the shifting is really easy. Uh, I found a neutral there. That's the first time I'm going to shift it on it. The clutch doesn't feel like it's pulling on your hand really uh, heavily. It feels really good on the clutch. And uh, the suspension is a little stiff, I'll be honest. Uh, but it's not bad. It's, it's definitely doable. The, the suspension isn't bad at all, and I love that sound. Uh, reading the uh, blogs and stuff from India, the the guys talk about uh, that thumper sound, and that's that's their Harley, uh, which we've talked about in other videos. This is their Harley. Uh, I think they're just too cool for an entry level bike for the ease of riding it. It's just so easy to ride this thing. Maintenance is going to be a snap on it. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of maintenance, but it does require it more often than the Japanese bikes. So there's that. Uh, I've read complaints that some of the fixtures will start to rust, but you know, you stay on top of that stuff, keep the bike clean. I don't think you'd have a problem with it really. But it's just too cool. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you as somebody who has um, as somebody who has bigger bikes, I like, uh, yeah, let's do that. I like that Harley that Grandpa's got. I wouldn't ever compare this to that bike. Uh, It's just not. But, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I've got bigger bikes to ride. I'm going to tell you, this puts a grin on your face. Uh, well, I'll put it like this. As enamored as I am with that BMW, I love that 1200 GS. That bike fits me so perfect. This bike does not. Uh, I'm way too big for this thing. That GS fits me so well. And uh, I really do love that bike and is, is in love with that bike as I still am after owning it for several years now. Uh, this puts a grin on my face the same way that does. This is as much fun to ride as that is in different ways. So I, it's really enjoyable. Uh, riding it the other day just cracked me up. I was I was laughing the whole way. It was just so cool. And, and I'm still I'm really enjoying this, even though I'm talking to you. Uh, if I wasn't, I'd be giggling. It's just too much fun. I don't know how quickly that would wear off. I don't think it would. Um, and part of the reason, and, and that's another reason to have the bike, is nostalgia. I've seen some of the older guys buy these uh, since Brento started getting them in. And uh, the thing about it is uh, we all started somewhere. We all started somewhere uh, on motorcycles and most of us started on small bikes. I'll, I'll see the guy that just stopped by and I was talking to him, uh, I'll see if I can throw some of that in on the video. But uh, like he said, he started out on a little 125, you know. Uh, I think the Grom is a ridiculous bike. I would much rather have something like this. I would much rather have something like this. But uh, yeah, that's kind of my thing. I just, uh, I'd rather do this. This is way better. And. Uh, I know the quality of the Grom is going to probably be a little bit better, but I don't care. That Grom, looking at that thing, it's ridiculous, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't have that grin factor. And this has that cool nostalgia. This is not retro like the um, the Triumphs. This is not retro like those bikes. 
this is the way this bike was made, more or less. There's some minor differences that are more technical than uh, visual. But uh, this is the bike that they were riding, you know, 50 years ago, 70 years ago, more or less. So to me, this isn't retro. They're still making it this way. And that's a whole other kind of cool altogether. Uh, in my book, it means a lot. Let's see if we can make it kickstart. It's getting warm. All these thermals that I'm wearing. Let's see if we can make this bike kickstart. All right, what we gotta do. Oh, that one's still got the protected on it. We're going to stand this up and point on its... I asked Brent when I left the shop, how do you kickstart it? He says, I wouldn't know, I'll never know. It's got an electric starter. So there's the kickstart. Uh, let's turn it on. And I think... Oh, that's the choke. I don't think you need to choke it. There you go. On the older models, before they changed the engine, uh, you had to do a whole routine. Get it to top dead center, it had the little magneto needle, all that stuff. Uh, there was a whole routine to getting this thing kick-started. You had to hold the compression release lever down. Uh, this has an internal automatic compression release. So there's a whole lot of stuff you don't have to do there. I think it's kind of cool that you can still kickstart it because, uh, you know, what if your battery dies? How many of us have had that happen on a bike? Anyway, let's go for a ride. Don't run over the potholes, dipshit. See that? It flicked right around that thing like nothing. And uh, that was just too cool. That was just too cool. So yeah, the brakes are more than adequate. Uh, I'm gonna go neutral. <laughs> the brakes are more than adequate because this thing doesn't go super fast. Uh, you can stop pretty darn good. Again, I'm doing 45 here. Let's let's just let's just get it down to a stop. That's not bad, you know. Uh, that's about that's about half as good as the BMW stops up. It's about the same weight. But like I say, you can't feel it because it's so low down. The weight on it is just so low down. Emergency stopping if somebody pulled out in front of you, I don't I don't know. I don't think that would be that great. I wouldn't want to be able to stop a little quicker than this does. But yeah, if I if I had rode motorcycles on purpose, if I had rode motorcycles on purpose, I think I would have done something like this, just for the nostalgia of it. I know you guys can't see it in the video. This thing's so well balanced, I'm coming to a stop at the stoplights, and I've only been riding it for a few minutes. Uh, I'm coming to a stop at the stoplights, and uh, I'm not even putting my foot down. <laughs> Turn the signal on. Okay, so I'm gonna ride around downtown for a minute and then I'm gonna bring it back to him. This bike is just awesome. I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this. I need to I need to get my ducks in a row, money-wise, and get get one of these. I, I love that. <laughs> If that doesn't make you happy, I, I can't help you, man. You got bigger problems than, there's that neutral again. We got bigger problems than the, 
anybody is gonna be able to help. This is another one of those, oh, dang it. Not bad, not bad. The suspension ate up every bit of that. And, uh, oh man, the suspension ate up every bit of that. I just stood up on the foot pegs a little. Like I was talking about the other day with the, uh, in the dirt. I don't know if I posted that. I need to share that. Yeah, I don't stand up all the way all the time. Sometimes I just uh, get my butt off the seat so the bulk of my weight's on the pegs. And uh, then I can sit back down as soon as it's comfortable to do so. I gotta say, these mirrors are useless. Uh, I would change the mirrors out. Man, off the line, this thing's great. You could, you man, around town traffic, you're doing just fine with this. Could you do better? Yeah. Uh, do you need to? No. You really don't. You do need better mirrors than that. What an awesome bike. The ride is actually softer than you would think. The seat helps a tremendous amount. The seat helps a tremendous amount. I can't see behind me. I'm in the habit of watching the mirrors when I'm setting up the uh, lights. For the simple reason I don't trust people. Come up behind you and run you over. Yeah, this is too much fun. Hey, another thing uh, where the brakes lack a little the engine braking is just phenomenal the engine braking on this is just phenomenal so if you're in a pinch and you can think to do it uh, downshift and let the clutch out and, and squeeze in brakes. <laughs> it stops right now. Going down the hill here, uh, letting it run against itself. Uh, we want to get going though. All those little bumps, that's a rough intersection right there. That wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. It, uh, it, it, I don't know how to put this. Uh, I don't know how to put this. The suspension on it is uh, going to let you feel a bit. It's going to let you feel a bit. But here's the deal about that. Here's the deal about that. Uh, the way that you're sitting on the bike, it doesn't beat you up. Uh, I think that's the right way to put it. You say because you're kind of sitting up on top of this, like the BMW. You feel like you're sitting down in it, and the way you're married to it, uh, you feel a little bit more. Especially since oh, I forgot about the downtown thing. I forgot they had this going on. I have no idea what this is, but they're doing it. There I am sitting on it again. This is this is fun. This is a fun bike. I'll tell you another thing. If uh, you're living in an apartment, I'm pretty sure this would fit through the front door without a problem. That's another thing about this. Man, it's just so small and so flickable. You can get around problems probably easier than you can stop from them. I'm gonna go forward. And the vibrations are not obnoxious. And it just pulls. It pulls.
This used to be the uh, the Harley dealership. All right, I'm sitting on it again. Six foot four, 270 pounds. Need to lose a little. <laughs> I don't know if you can even see that. All right, this is gonna be a long video. Now for the uh, on, I think this is blinkers. Where's the start? I honestly don't know. There's a start button here somewhere. I think that's the horn. Good grief. Ah, probably screwed up now. I don't have any idea where the start button is on this. There you go. You don't need a start button. All right, well, I'm gonna go take it back. It's time to wrap this up, guys. This has been great fun. I love this bike. I, th I think I, I don't think. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get one. Uh, this would be great for Ben. And for me. Put that kickstart back in. be fun for me and it'd be a good starter bike for Ben it's not got enough power that you can get in a lot of trouble with it but if you get caught speeding with this thing it's because you were in a school zone <laughs> I'm just saying anyway uh, too cool awesome bike oh another thing the cheap price on this. Um, I should talk about the size of the gas tank and all that too. I think it's a two and a half or three gallon tank. Uh, another thing on this, uh, I have searched high and low for the last five years all over Southern California for used examples of these. And anything that looks even halfway decent, they are asking just almost what they paid for it. Uh, you cannot find one of these used for less than the price of a new one. Uh, they're just, it's so hard to find. I've had, I haven't seen it anywhere. I saw one, the guy was asking like 3,800 bucks for it. And the seat was chewed up by a dog and the uh, tank had a nice crease in it. And, uh, The tank had a nice crease in it. It was good and dented, and it was rusty looking as heck. And uh, he was asking uh, like 3,800 bucks for that bike, and he wouldn't come down. Uh, I saw where, uh, I think I talked to him. He was down in LA area. Look at this, just listen to that thing purr. It's just, just scooting along. Yeah, he was down in the LA area, he wanted 30, and he wouldn't come down on it. And uh, anyway, he sold it. <laughs> Somebody came through and bought that bike. And I'm sure he didn't come down much on it. He probably, you know, let it go for 35. But uh, I wouldn't have given 25 for that bike. It was beat to heck. It was, talk about a restoration project on a, you know, 2010 or 2012 motorcycle that looks like a uh, 1949 bike. Listen to that grunt. Oh man, what a great bike. Anyway, if you're in the Central Valley, you're down here uh, in Bakersfield area, and you are interested in one of these, you need to come talk to Brento at Adventure Center. Uh, these bikes are just so cool. 
They're so much fun. I'm definitely going to be getting one. It's going to take me a minute, but I'm going to get one. Again, look at the maneuverability of this in small, tight spaces. Oh man, and I'm just flat footed. Oh, it's so cool. How much fun was that? So I rode the Continental GT the other day. I'm not going to ride that today. Uh, I'm getting kind of tired. How's it going? And uh, I honestly, I have never ridden a, uh, a lean forward sport bike type setup. Uh, I've sat on a couple of cafe racers. I love the look of cafe racers and I really like the look of this bike. Um, I really like the look of this bike and for the price I don't think you can beat it. You can't build a cafe racer for as cheap as this is brand new with a warranty. Uh, I think I think I'm not a sport bike kind of guy though to be honest. Uh, I didn't care for this. It was cool and I like the power of the engine and it revs just a little bit differently than that one. But. Uh, it, it, I didn't like the lean forward thing. I didn't like the the balance of it. You feel like your center of gravity is a little bit higher, or at least it did to me, on account of being, uh, you know, retardedly tall, just massively tall. But uh, I think this bike, if you got rid of the thing there and trimmed it up a little bit in the back, I think it would really look really look cool it sounds cool that's for sure but anyway that would be my pick uh i like that i don't have a two up i don't have anybody to ride with me uh, my wife won't do that if i were going to do that i would put a, a seat on the back and and be able to put it on take it off but that to me is it all right guys well there's my ride of this bike uh and uh too much fun if you're looking for one of these come down to adventure center talk to brento uh, get your bike man these things are so cool i can't wait to pick one of these up all right guys we'll catch you on the next one I don't think I can even fit in there. Pretty sure I can't. I can't believe I got it. Hey, look at that, guys. Dang. Pulling into the house, and we just rolled over 35,000 miles. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome.